Here is an outline of a torsion spring problem. A stainless steel torsion spring is required as part of an assembly to counterbalance a 7 newton load placed 150 millimeters from the spring center or pivot. The spring will be installed on a 12 millimeter diameter rod. The spring internal coil diameter must clear the rod by 15%. The entire length of the spring must also fit within a 50mm space when assembled. Define the optimum spring geometry to meet the load requirement without exceeding 60% of the material tensile limit when one arm is rotated 270 degrees to a loaded position. The estimated material tensile limit is 1900 megapascals. OK, so let's start work on the solution. First, let's begin by finding the spring stiffness or rate. We can find the moment or torque required at 270 degrees to counterbalance the load. The torque is found by taking the force and multiplying by the distance from the center of the rod or pivot. Here, our torque is 1050 newton millimeters. We can use this to define the spring stiffness. The stiffness or rate is torque over the loaded angle of rotation. So 1050 over 270 is 3.9. So the target stiffness of for our design is 3.9 newton millimeters. This being the spring response in newton millimeters per degree of spring arm rotation. Next, we can find a rough estimate of the wire diameter. I'm going to say rough because this is going to be recalculated later, as there is a variable we cannot calculate yet. There are different stress equations for different shaped wires. Let's take the equation for round wire and rework to find the diameter. Stress equals 32 times torque over pi times wire diameter to the power of 3. A quick rework gives the diameter. Now, let's use this to work out the wire diameter, bearing in mind that stress cannot exceed 60%. The tensile limit is 1,900 megapascals, so 0 0.6 times 1,900 gives 1,140 megapascals as the 60% target. Let's input this into the equation. We input the torque value needed to counterbalance the load and maximum acceptable stress. and this gives us a wire diameter of 2.1 millimeters. I mentioned the wire diameter was a rough estimate. This is because we need to allow for the stress correction. Adjustment is needed because stress is not evenly distributed across the wire cross section during loading. Due to curvature of the spring and axis shift it is actually higher on the inside of the spring coil diameter. We can add stress correction to the stress equation to account for the increased stress. We're going to use while stress correction in this instance. So 32 times torque over pi times wire diameter to the power of 3 multiplied by 4 times c squared minus c minus 1 over 4 times c times c minus 1 will give us our actual stress and therefore the final wire diameter. The only problem is we don't know the spring index c, so let's find it. We need to work out our internal diameter. Internal coil diameter equals rod diameter times 115%. The rod is 12 millimeters, so 12 times 1.15 gives us 13.8 millimeters. We can rely on this figure as a constant. 
the internal diameter is not going to change from this point forwards. The coil outer diameter is straightforward. Internal diameter plus 2 times wire diameter gives us 18 millimeters. From this, we can work out the mean diameter. This is what we actually needed from all of this for the spring index equation. The spring index is mean coil diameter over wire diameter. And the index is 7.57 in this instance. Let's just quickly check C. It is between 4 and 12, so it should be okay for manufacture. It's not difficult to form and it's not likely to tangle. Okay, so let's now find our actual stress, including while correction. Remember, our target stress is 60%. Let's add the missing pieces to the stress equation. So now with correction, we have a stress of 1280.87 megapascals. But does this meet our 60% stress target? The answer to this is corrected stress over tensile limit times 100. And the calculation gives an actual stress of 67.41%. This is way above target, so we need to go back and recalculate the wire diameter. We are overstressed by 7.41%, so I'm going to reduce the target by this amount. So the new target is 52.59% of the tensile limit. 1900 times 0 0.5259 gives us a new stress target of 999.13 megapascals. Based on what we know so far, this new target is still a placeholder, but it should allow us to recalculate and find a wire diameter to meet the original 60% stress target. OK, so let's start with the wire diameter. We plug the revised stress into the equation. And based on the new input, the revised wire diameter is 2.2. To find the revised spring index, let's quickly find the new mean coil diameter. DI remains unchanged as it's the minimum diameter target but the mean diameter increases to 16. The spring index is reduced from 7.57 to 7.27. This is still acceptable. The index is still between 4 and 12, so we can continue. OK, so let's get rid of the placeholder stress and replace it now. Our actual stress, as always, includes correction. So, based on the revised wire diameter and index, stress is 1119.02 megapascals. Let's check this is below the target. Corrected stress over tensile limit times 100 gives us 58.89% stress at 270 degrees. So we can move forward with the design. Now, we need to calculate the spring length. To do this, we need to define the number of coils. Number of active coils, or NA, is Young's modulus times wire diameter to the power of 4 over 10.8 times mean diameter times spring stiffness. Let's just stop here for a second. OK, so the problem asks for a stainless steel spring. We can find the Young's modulus for any given spring steel from material charts. The stainless steel I'm selecting is a common type specified for springs in BSEN 10270 part 3. I already know my tensile target, but if not known, we can find the tensile limit from charts based on the wire diameter. Plugging in the missing data, we can say the number of active coils is 
I just need to point out here, in this equation, k is based on the spring stiffness for one complete coil rotation of 360 degrees. And we need to note the number of coils does not conform to the image we have in mind. So we can dismiss what we have so far and replace it. We have 18.83 coils. Importantly, we have 0.83 of a full turn. So we need to redraw one of the arms to account for this, as the previous image portrayed 0.75 of a turn. We don't need to know the number of coil turns associated with the ends, but let's just go over it. So any or contribution from the ends is length of arm one plus arm two over three times mean diameter times pi and this gives us 0.133. And therefore, the contribution to the coil count from the main body is active turns minus contribution, which gives us 18.697. Let's now find the last missing piece, starting with the free length. Length at free state in other words, the spring before loading, is active coils plus 1 times wire diameter, which gives us a length of 43.626 millimetres. So far we're under the 50 millimetre target, but the spring grows in length under load, so we need this as well. The length under load is the worst case length as the spring expands as the coil count increases. Turning 270 degrees adds an additional 0.75 to the coil count. So loaded length equals Na plus 1 plus 0.75 times D. This gives us a worst case length of 45.276 millimetres. This is below the 50 millimetre target, so the spring is good. Just to finish, let's just take a look at what we have. In answer to the problem, the optimal geometry to counterbalance the 7 Newton load at 150 mm from the center is as follows. The spring rate is 3.9 Newton millimeters. The internal coil diameter of 13.8 clears the 12 mm rod by 15%. The wire diameter will be 2.2 mm. The spring will have 18.83 coils. The stress at 270 degrees will be 1119.02 megapascals. The free length will be 43.623 millimeters and the loaded length is 45.28. Both lengths are under the 50 millimeter target.